Welcome to the Game Academy. My name is Mark. Henry. And today we're going to review and look at Battle of the Bands World Tour Edition designed by Dan Smith. And it's a self-published game for two to four players, although you can add more if you get some of the expansions. And uh, first of all, we're going to take a look at how to play it. And then we're going to look at us actually playing the game. Then you can hop forward to our review of the game. Uh, if you're watching on a computer, there's going to be some links on the screen, so you can hop to whichever part you would like. quick overview of how this game is going to work. First of all, you've got two different decks. You've got your red deck, your resources, your blue deck, your events. And in your blue deck, you're going to have uh, things like your music biz cards, which are going to give you different uh, abilities that you can do during your turn. You're going to have gig cards, which are going to give you points. As noted by these stars, some will be up to one point, maybe two points at the most. Those are important. You're going to be using the gig cards quite a bit. You're also going to have a monkey wrench card that you can play during gigs, and sometimes they have requirement. Band member has to have that icon. We'll talk about band members. You have contracts, which are important if you want to play a hit single. So if you have a hit single, it might give you plus two hip points. You know how hip you are? Everybody's hip and in this game. And you're counting up your hip points to see who wins a gig. Well, here you've got your hit single, and this is worth two points, and this always stays out in front of you unless somebody steals it somehow with a card and such. So um, there's other ones, like these yellow ones are internet hit singles, and these can be played without a contract. Otherwise, you have to have a contract first, or what's called a signed gig. Then in the red deck, you have your what's called resources. Now, at the beginning of your turn, you draw up to six cards. So however many cards you need to draw, you draw. But you can only draw ever draw two at most from the red deck. You can draw as many as you need from the blue deck. And you've got your band members. You've got Jem here, who's truly outrageous. And if she's got a special uh, instrument that she's uh, used to using, it'll say here, and a lot of times I'll make her worth more points. Uh, then it might give you some flavor text. The lightning bolt means that they're, they're a little more outrageous outrageous or whatever electric um, female and then the color background does make a difference sometimes and you might have an instrument like a cowbell you can only have one of these on a band member also you can only ever have four band members you, that includes yourself there's me cards and the me cards are worth one point if you end up with the right instrument on you so like if you end up with any wind instrument you'd be getting more points because a microphone is a wind instrument keep in mind these are all prototype uh, cards and then you have the reputations which you play on other people's cards and you can play or you can play them on your own card and get the positive effects so you could be a witty lyricist or you could be an obvious lyricist either way and basically what you do then is you total up the opponent's hip points hip hip for the band member that you want to play it on and you roll a six sided die and you have to roll equal to or under their hip number and then they gain this one permanently. Uh, vice versa, you could do it on your own, and that's how they improve. And that's pretty much the type of cards that you're going to see in the deck. On your turn, basically, you can play one card. You can either play a band member, you can play an instrument, you can play a reputation, you can play a uh, music biz card, you can play a hit single, you can play a contract, or you can play a gig. You cannot play a monkey wrench. Monkey wrenches you only play during gigs. When a gig comes up, you're basically totaling up your, well, let, let's just go over this. By playing this card, you start a gig round. Everyone plays, but only players with participating band members may win this card. You can sometimes eliminate uh, other people's band members from participating. So that's an important thing to remember. Only monkey wrenches, band members, and instruments may be played during a gig round. If you play a band member or instrument, during a gig round, they're just temporary. They're guest star, and it's an instrument that you borrowed from somebody for just that event. So when the gig's over, it goes away. Whoever has the highest number of hit points at the end of that round, um, you'll roll a six-sided die, and then you'll see who has the highest total. 
Whoever has the highest total of hit points will win that gig, and that just puts them one step closer to winning. The amount of points that you need to win varies depending on the amount of players that you have, and that's basically how it's going to work. I'm going to draw from the blue deck, and I will play a well-read Canadian on my turn, and it is now your turn. Go to four hit points. Oh, yep. Four hip. <sighs> Shake your hip. I'm going to draw one of these. So it draws up to six. And play a percussion instrument on him. Is that what you need? No, you need string, huh? Okay. Yeah. Alright, so my turn. I'm going to draw a red card. And I'm going to put the audience is going to be my backup here. So I gain, if I battle it out, I'll have six hip in my pocket. And I now have a wind instrument, so I've got one point. Fine. I'm going to draw another one of these. I'm going to play the siren. Siren. Okay. Well, at least you're doing two because I had that. Alright, I'm going to play Jingo. Jingo. He's only worth one to me. Alright, your turn. Okay, I'm going to draw one of these. Let's play for this gig. We're at a children's party. Oh. Oh, you're playing a gig, huh? Yeah. Alright, so now that we're at a gig, how much are you up to for... Four. You got four? Alright, so you get to play a monkey wrench, or a band member, or I'm instrument. Playing. Okay, so he's a temporary band member. And I'm going to play a monkey wrench on you. Choose any one band member. They don't participate during this gig. So your siren, she is gone. Uh, so you're at three. And I'm still at seven. And are you going to do anything else? Um, All right, so then I'm going to pass. I'm at seven. You're at what? Three. Three. All right, so seven versus three. I rolled a two. You rolled a six. So you're at nine and I'm at nine. A person in a tie, it goes to the person who played the card. Man. Okay. Maybe I should have played an extra card there. All right. Now it's your but now it's my turn. Goodness gracious. And this guy goes for what? Yep. All right. Okay, and we're back. And now it's time for us to give our final thoughts on Battle of the Bands World, World Tour, Tour Edition. Edition. So, Reed, give us some thoughts on the game. I like, like, when you have lots of power. I like having the lots hip, of power. Yeah. hip point. Yeah. yeah. So that you can beat people. Because then you get more stuff. You get more stuff, yep. And uh, more points is the name of the game, so obviously you want to get as many points as possible. Usually you get to a set amount of points. Um, a very simple game. There's not a ton of rules to it. Basically on your turn you can usually just play one card. Unless you get the producer, in which case you can play two cards, but that's a pretty sought after card. But then you have one less band member, so your band's not quite as good. Yeah, um, I think the two best cards in this deck is the Prince of Darkness and the producer. Yeah. Santa's pretty good, too. Yeah. But, yeah, the, overall, I mean, these cards are the artwork I really like on this. Except for, like, the edging. But this prototype copy, so that doesn't matter. Um, yeah. But the artwork's good. Uh, it really hasn't been updated in the editions because it hasn't had to have been. Um, everything makes sense as far as the iconography on it. Uh, everything looks nice and clean. I like... How everything looks in this game so I don't think it's gonna be very confusing for you when you actually play it one thing I will say is that maybe the game runs a little long at times what I would recommend is they have a recommended amount of points that you play to and I would actually recommend you know taking out a few points here and there maybe like eight points well, maybe not eight points. We played an eight-point game the other day, and it went really quick, almost a little too quick to really get anything going. So maybe, maybe like ten. 
10 or 12 points would probably be about good enough, makes it fast enough at that point where you can, then it, then it truly becomes a filler game, and I think that's where it shines more is as a filler game. Otherwise, it can run too long, but it depends on if that's your cup of tea. If you like games like, let's say, uh, Munchkin or uh, Shea Geek, you know, you're probably not going to mind that length. Me, however, I'm looking for more of a filler type. So if I want to play this, I'm going to cut down on the number of points that you're going to get to. Any other thoughts, Reed? Anything you disliked about the game? Not really. I... Except for... Keeping track of points, maybe? Well, yeah, that, because, like, the die bounces around and it always gets messed up. Yeah, it's hard to keep track of how many hip points that you have. So, you know, I recommend these aren't... We're just using 20-sided dice to keep track of them. Maybe use the bigger ones like you get with Magic the Gathering uh, life trackers. Um, because, really, you're going to be, during a, a gig... Your points are going to fluctuate up and down so much that it's going to be hard for you to keep track of how many points that you have when you're so, competing for it. Yeah, you should just like play all your cards and then count your points up. Yeah, well, you want to keep track of the total as you go through, though, because it's important to know what your opponent has to know if you're going to play more. The other thing is, a lot of times, though, even if you know you're not going to win that gig, you might want to just keep playing cards to it to clear out your hand, which can be a bit of strategy, because that's a good way to get rid of cards without spending your action discarding. Yeah. Um, another thing, uh, I I actually prefer it as a two-player game. There's less downtime in between turns, and uh, less confusion during gigs that way. Uh, it depends on how you want to play it, though. I like it as a two-player game. Uh, if you get expansions, though, I can see it being a little bit better that way. But I feel like it really balances out pretty well, the back and forth, as a two-player game. Uh, even though you can go up to four, and if you get the expansions, you can go up to, like, six. So, you know, it's a fun game, uh, as long as you make sure that you don't treat it like it's just some heavy Euro game or something where you have to have strategy and have to have to win. Just take it easy, enjoy it for what it is, play up some of these the silly situations that you get into with your band. If Santa Claus is playing um, playing a harmonica, you know that that can be kind of funny if he's doing an air guitar. You know, you got this big ape. He's funny. I mean, so there's lots of fun stuff in this game. Um, it's not for everyone, but I will say there are going to be plenty of people who like it. This game has been out there for several years. This is a new iteration of it. Uh, toned down a little bit so that it's more of a family game now. But you can purchase expansions that will make it a little more adult themed. Uh, so you, you can do it however you want. If you want it as a fun family game, that's what you get right out of the box. If you want to add more to it, you can. That's up to you in the Kickstarter you can check that out. Um, so we got the Jonas Rocks here, too. Well, that, that does not come with the game, by the way. And Jonas Brothers, really, Reed? Gross. I don't even know what they are. Oh, I don't even know what they are, either. Nobody knows what they are. But anyway, we think it's a pretty good game. Reed, do you enjoy this game? Yeah. Reed really enjoys it. So there you have it. Uh, Reed's seven years old, so, you know, that's kind of an age that you can go off of to see if maybe your kids will like it. It does involve quite a bit of reading, though, so keep that in mind. You know, Reed's pretty good at, at reading stuff. Reed, good at reading. Hmm, imagine that. So, but there you have it. Battle of the Bands, we like it.